nice to actually talk to you face to face ish. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's uh, we've been in contact for a long time online. I don't even know how long it is, but yeah, it's good to finally yeah. hear your voice, get to chat. Yeah. So I guess, uh, you know, we could start off. I mean, I met you whenever you were at Distilled. Um, but I would love to kind of hear about kind of how you got into marketing to kind of start with, I guess, and and that whole process and getting into the business and everything. Yeah, totally. So um, let's I guess let's start at the beginning. So I went to I went to university in Virginia. I went to James Madison University, and um, so I, I majored in a, my major was called technical and scientific communication, which is uh, you know it's a very I, I would say it's a very important, uh, you know, thing to know. I did a lot of like proposal writing and, you know, press releases and you know and that sort of thing. Um, but also a lot of like documentation. Um, but my is very small. Literally 35 people in my major every year out of a at a school with at the time 16,000 students and now 20,000. So like super tiny major. Um, but we had a concentration called uh, online publications. Basically, is web development. So I took that as my uh, as my concentration, so I learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, you know, a little bit of Java, um, and a little bit of PHP, and so I started developing in Joomla um, back in the day, and then uh, well, built my first website from scratch, then started developing in Joomla, um, and then I lived uh, I lived in Europe for a little while um, at a community in Switzerland. I lived there for a year between 2009 2010. After I had worked for a company in uh, Northern Virginia, being their webmaster, but also uh, supporting clients so as a consultant. And then I moved to Switzerland and was helping to run a book publishing company, um, English English language books, um, but we were based in French speaking Switzerland. So mm. I was like, well, I have no, uh, I have no way to uh, hang on one second. Uh, all right, never mind. Uh, so uh, I was like, yeah, I have no way um, to uh, to you know actually be in person to market these books. Like I have to learn how to do it, you know, from afar. Right? I have to learn to right. do it on the internet. So I actually found Moz and Distilled and Seer and you know places like that. And so I started learning SEO, gotcha. um, you know, and, and marketing. And so then I, I moved back to the states uh, in uh, like August 2010 and got a job full time uh, working for a small marketing agency in Philadelphia in the online education space, uh, online colleges. So like for profit online colleges, which is super spammy. Um, but you know, building a lot of links, but also like starting to develop content. I've been a blog. I've been a blogger for over a decade now, um, and you know, starting in high school, I started started writing my first like Zanga blog, right? So back in the day, um, but uh, yeah, and so I got a job full time in SEO, and kind of the rest the rest is history. I did a lot of link building and content development. Uh, I went to Distilled's first ever Link Love conference in London, and uh, and it was there that they announced they were opening up. New York City office, where I met Tom and Will, and basically just oh, tested Tom until he gave me a job. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, became a you know became a consultant through Distilled and started uh, working with you know large large and small companies, Fortune 500s, all the way down to like VC back tech startups, um, and just like kind of went all in. Uh, you know, for a couple years there, I was working crazy hours. Like I was blogging twice a week on my own blog and blogging for Distilled about once a month and blogging for Moz and doing Whiteboard Fridays and speaking at conferences and meetups and Right. Uh, and all of that, really just hustling as hard as I could, um, you know, just to, you know, to, to learn as much as I could, to, you know, drive as much value for my clients, um, and also, you know, honestly, to build, you know, to build my name in the industry. Right. Um, and then based off of that, you know, Zillow approached me um, almost two years ago now, July, MozCon 2013, they approached me, and um, within a couple of months, I had joined as the, uh, the online marketing manager for Hotpads, and um, I've since been, uh, I'm now the senior marketing manager. Um, and I went, we went from being me um, to now I have eight people total um, on my team, and I oversee right I oversee SEO, email, content marketing, PR, uh, data content. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of what I'm what I'm up to right now. Gotcha. Now, whenever you were at Distilled, was that was Zillow one of your actual clients at Distilled? Whenever you worked there, back, was there back, was there some in, kind of other? Back in the day, Zillow actually worked with Distilled. Um, and so Zillow was actually one of the first projects that I worked on um, when I joined when I joined Distilled because um, one of my coworkers in Seattle was the was a point person because Zillow is based in Seattle, but he needed a lot of help technically. Um, well, he's very strong technically, but he didn't have the time to be doing it. So I actually did a lot of work, technical SEO work for Zillow. Gotcha. I first started Distilled in 2011, 
Um, and that's how I got to know uh, Matt Bowers, who's our former director of SEO um, at Zillow, who, um, who's currently taking a year off and traveling the world. Um, but I got to know Matt and then saw him at the conference, um, and he was there with the guy that ended up becoming my boss when I first joined Zillow. Gotcha. Okay. It's kind of all a, just, a, just a virtuous yeah. cycle, man. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's fun how those kind of opportunities chain together and everything <laughs> as, a, as that goes on. Totally, yeah. Well, it was funny because like, when they approached me at, at MozCon and I was talking to Kyle and he was like, he's like, you know, we're looking for an SEO manager at Hot Pads and uh, he's like, you know, wondering if you're interested and I was like, you know what, man, honestly, like, I'm, I'm happy where I am but like, you seem like a cool guy, you know, here's, you know, let's exchange information, we just exchange information and he called me up the next week and was like, so I was serious about that job. You want to fly to San Francisco and we'll interview you? I'm like, well, never been to San Francisco before. My girlfriend at the time, now my wife, was like, just just go, just check it out. <laughs> uh, and you know, year and year and a half, almost two years later, you know, here we are in San Francisco. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, so whenever you were at, uh, whenever you were actually at Distilled, um, just because I'm in the agency side of things, so I'll, I would really love to kind of feel out that side of things. What were some of your favorite projects to work on? I mean, you mentioned all the way from Fortune 500 companies, which are obviously, I mean, it's it's fun because you can move a certain, like, you can move tiny needles and it has this giant ripple effect. Um, 100%. But then there's also that kind of startup hustle vibe with some clients where you just have to try to make things happen really quick. Mm -hmm. um, so which was kind of your favorite uh, probably to work on? Uh, I have, th th there were two projects that I worked on for a long time that were really fun for me. One was a, a Fortune 500 hotels brand, international hotels brand. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one was a, um, at the time, just a seed-backed tech, uh, tech startup. They didn't even have their Series A yet. Um, so the, the, the tech startup one was really fun. Um, they're called Grovo. And, yeah. Uh, they, and so I worked with Grovo for a long time. They approached uh, Ron, who was our, our head of sales at Distill New York City, and um, and basically he's like, I have this tech startup that like, you know, we're like very top end of their budget, but they want to invest in SEO. Um, and basically I ended up being put as the consultant on the project and uh, I worked from their office once a week, every Thursday for about a year. Wow, um, that's you know, cool. And it was awesome just like, you know, being embedded in there, like really becoming part of the team. Um, right. And, you know, we were able to, there was a ton of like uh, technical stuff that was broken. Like for example, they had at the time about four or 500 pages on their site and they had, you know, technical geeky SEO here, they had 10,302 redirects. Holy cow. So, like, cha you know, cha <laughs> we just cleaned all of that up, right? We implemented right. a first-click free program, um, and just, like, you know, so we were able to expose all the content to the, you know, to the search engines and drive traffic that way. Um, right. But also, you know, people had to log in, and we had, like, a pretty tough login walk. They watched one video, they had to log in, right? right. And they've since pivoted away from that, like, B2C, you know, online learning model. Uh, but it was super cool to like, you know, be embedded there, work directly with the CEO and the CTO and their engineers. So like, they're like, let's just do it. Like, let's, you know, let's kick it out of the water. Let's try this stuff. And, you know, implementing first click free. Like, I've never seen anyone other than a news site do that. And like, right. we got it implemented. They have a rock star technical team over there. Um, and then eventually, I was able to hire in a, an SEO manager to there. Um, awesome. And now she's their director of acquisition marketing, and I'm still an advisor to them. I talk with her every couple weeks. Um, and, you know, so it's, it's been awesome. Like, I started working with them in 2011, so it's been uh, three and a half years now, and I'm still, like, in touch with them, with the CEO. I still talk to, you know, Caroline every, every couple weeks. Um, and just seeing where they've come, and really, uh, they told me that, like, what I helped them do to gain traction initially is what helped them get their Series A. And awesome. And since, since got their Series B. So that was, like, you know, the, and they're killing it. Like, they're doing an awesome job. So... Yeah. Uh, you know, that was super, super gratifying. Um, the other interesting one was for that hotels chain where, um, you know, they had an SEO team who's really good, um, you know, but they're having trouble getting, you know, getting buy-in. And so, you know, really helping them build a case to their director of marketing um, who, who herself was not an SEO, uh, didn't understand SEO, but building business cases and, you know, that sort of thing to say, like, hey, you know, give us X, you know, tens of thousands of dollars and we think we can do X to your business. Right. Um, you know, and here's the model, and here's how it makes sense. So that one was really cool because it made me, you know, it makes you get outside of the, uh, you know, oh, fix these redirects, and you know, uh, build, write this content, and oh, do this outreach yeah. to the. This is how SEO and marketing and online marketing, uh, you know, like non-paid marketing can actually really help you build your business. Right. Um, here's here's the business case for it, and here's the model, and it works, and you know, let's talk through that. 
but like this is long term, you know, kind of where y'all need to go in order to realize this opportunity. Right. Um, and that served me very well here, working in house, getting buy in for things, you know, showing, you know, if you let me spend X amount of money on this thing, I can make our business unit, you know, X hundreds of thousands of dollars in the next year. Right. Um, right. So you know, so, so yeah, but uh, you know, working directly with developers was super super helpful and has helped me out at HotPads, and then also learned to build business cases um, as well. So it was awesome. funny, I was talking with uh, a buddy that I used to work with in uh, at Distilled, who's now at a, a, another company in Seattle, and uh, he said that he now realizes like why we ran into, like why all the like uh, the roadblocks you run into at an agency, like why those are there, and like they actually make sense. Once you're on the inside, you go, oh, yeah. like, I totally understand why that exists. Right. But, like, you know, it's really hard to understand that from the agency side, that every agency should be trying to understand that, understand the personnel issues, going to visit your clients as often as possible. Right. Uh, you know, to because that's sort of that face-to-face -face time, even just grabbing lunch with the, you know, the CEO of a tech, of the, of the you know, 10-person startup is just, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Right. That actually sounds, that, that's an incredible point, actually, in, in the still does. That seems like it's a very unique practice, too, that most consultancies don't actually just give a consultant, like, and embed you in the business, um, totally. which, which sounds like it, that, that definitely seems like it would be a much better connection, because I actually came from my first agency. I've had a, uh, a, a similar kind of deal. However, we were an agency, but then on the other side, it was a development shop that was building their own product. So I was doing SEO for the product itself as well. It was a CMS for Floris. But uh, basically, uh, like, I would walk over to the developers and be like, hey, can you implement this? And then they're like, oh, we can't implement this right now. And then I go over to the CEO, and I'm like, this is why this hasn't been done. This is why we haven't been making money. And then they're like, okay, we'll you know, get it done. And then the developers move, and it, it moves so quickly. Um, but I can definitely tell from you know from the agency side how having somebody embedded in would be kind of almost like a superpower for that. Uh, yeah, totally. You know, and, and that it's it that's a funny point because that definitely works in like a small company where you know it's a, it's a startup that's just moving fast and everyone's just doing everything and you know and and uh, you know but then those companies can very quickly run into the, what's called, what Avinash loves to call the hippo problem, right? Highest paid person in the room get what they want, right? Like that doesn't work as well being in a bigger, you know, in a bigger company where you have like different teams, different serving different, you know, different things. I can't yeah. just, you know, go all the way up the ladder and say to, you know, our CEO, like this stuff isn't getting done. Like right. I need to go through the proper channels and try to influence that change all the way up. And right. if at the end of the day we end up there and he has to put, you know, he has to say like you guys have to get this done, that's fine. But then I have to also haven't just gone over everyone's heads. And yeah, I might get things done, but I'm gonna like anger, you know, the whole organization, and you know, <laughs> at the same time, right? Right, right. Like, you no, know, you got, you gotta. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting being the. But you can also get away with that at the agency, right? Right. When you're in house, it's different because you know those relationships matter very much. Yeah. Uh, but the agency, like, you, you just have to get things done. Yeah. So that's a good actually point that leads into um, whenever you move from the agency to like in-house at uh, Zillow Hotpads. Yeah. Um, uh, which would you refer to it as? I mean, I know that it's I, mainly working on Hotpads, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm the I'm the senior senior manager of Hotpads marketing. So I, I work on Hotpads.com. Um, I don't do anything on Zillow.com. So gotcha. Okay. Hotpads Hotpads was acquired by Zillow uh, end of 2012. Right. Right. But okay. Yeah, gotcha. On Zillow.com. So how was that transition for you, and like what things stood out to you immediately that just you know need to happen? Uh, to move things forward, I would say actually. Um, it's a that's an interesting question. It's a big question. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I noticed off the bat that were different were like it was great to just be able to walk over to an engineer and say like hey like there's this thing that like let's just get it fixed, and they were just like boom, jump into the code base, boom, get it done. Okay, going out in the next deploy. Right. There was one. I remember one time that I walked over to the guy that's now our our director of uh, consumer engineering. Um, I walked over to him and I was like, "Hey, Doug, can we fix this thing?" He's like, "Yeah, sure, no problem." Boom, pulls up the screen, gets it done, and deploys it right there. So literally, like two minutes after I like needed to get it done, it was done. Right. I was like, "Holy crap!" All right. <laughs> um, that's so, always great. You know, that, that kind of thing has changed because like I was you know probably number between like 16 and 20. I, I normally say I was like number 18 at Hotpads, and now we're 50. Um, you know, so we've tripled in size basically since I joined um, as a as a company unit. 
Um, so there have been a lot more like processes and structures and that kind of thing uh, put into place. Um, you know, at an agency, you're kind of, to an extent, working in a bubble and working in a silo, and you're, you know, you're doing, you're putting together reports and you're sending them to people, and you're, you know, and then kind of like leaving it to to them to get it done. Um, we were a little bit more uh, hands-on, consultative in that approach at Distilled, um, you know, because we always talked about getting shit done. Right. Um, and so we did whatever was needed to get shit done. Where like I would go down and I'd be part of like backlog meetings and discussions with engineers at that hotel company. Um, you know, go on site there to visit them, and you know, was involved in that and kind of be a part of those conversations and the debates. Like, should we prioritize this over that? Um, you know, which was great. But um, and that prepped me well for you know now where working in house, you put together all the you know all the things that that need to be done. You know, make work on making the business cases, etc. But then taking those, putting them into a backlog, prioritizing them based off of the rest of like the you know the priorities within the company. Right. Uh, you know, advocating advocating for like dedicated resources. I was uh, I've been lucky enough to be able to get a, a growth engineering team on the Hot Ads product team dedicated to SEO and email projects. Awesome. Um, but I we you know but we had to make the case for that and advocate for it. And you know I'm super lucky to have an awesome manager um, who was like, yes, absolutely, like this makes a ton of sense. Let's do it. Um, you know, and I, I've been I was very lucky in that way. A lot of companies you know don't have that. Right. Um, a lot of people don't have that you know buy-in and, and a boss like that. Um, right. But, uh, yeah, so, like, you know, things have even changed over the last year and a half, right? Because when I started, it was me doing all the marketing. Um, right. And now I have channel owners and specialists and, um, you know, kind of layers there. And, um, it's, you know, my, my role has very much shifted over the last year and a half, um, you know, and, and, and it has been. I mean, it's been a year and a half since I've been in an agency, so, um, yeah. Gotcha. And so, actually, whenever you... It seems like you kind of felt that uh, that in-house like uh, ability even whenever you were at Distilled, and that seems like w whenever you actually got the person embedded, the SEO manager you said that was embedded in Grovo, uh, mm -hmm. was that before you actually left Distilled while you were still consulting with them, or was that uh, after they had stopped being a client? Or um, that was when I was still. Let's see here. Let me see if I can get the timelines right. That was. I started working with them in of 2011, and I think it was actually end of 2000, near the end of 2012 that we hired, um, that we hired her. Um, so, yeah, it was while I was still at Distilled, and then they stayed on as a, as a, a client of mine for a while after. And it was, but it was understood that like we were going to come in, we were going to set them up for success, we were going right. to get the right person in there, and we were going to you know help that person along, and then they were going to stop being a client. Yeah, uh, and that's and that's exactly what happened. Awesome. Yeah, that's something that I've actually been trying to do is like, I, you know, whenever somebody actually hires us on or they're talking to us, I'm always like, well, you know, do you have your own team? And then if they're like, no, then it's like, well, you know, you should. And so, you know, we can get you jump started and everything, but I do want you to, you know, I, I can help you hire internally to get these spots filled out because you have to have somebody that can actually manage this stuff internally and totally. actually take the reins and run with it later on. Yeah. So I love that that kind of approach was taken uh, at, at, a, at a very intense level at Distilled and everything. That was really yeah. cool to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like whenever you actually came on with uh, uh, hot pads, um, what were the things that you did uh, to look for uh, to to kind of get caught up um, to see like you know to assess where the strengths were where the weaknesses were uh, and, um, and and get a really good idea for the focus of what exactly you needed to uh, uh, achieve whenever you were there. Yeah, I mean, so it really it really started with just a lot of conversations with people, getting like a history, you know, on the on the company and on the site and kind of like what what was already in the priority queue, like you know, coming up for the next year, um, you know, talking with, like, my boss is based in Seattle, and so talking with her about, like, you know, she's the chief marketing officer for Zillow, so talking with her and our CEO and other people about, like, what do we want Hot Pads to be? Like, what, you know, the brand was pretty unestablished, and so, like, who should we focus on? Like, kind of focusing on what audience should we focus on, or how should we start the process to fi figure out which audience we should focus on? Um, right. You know, and then uh, and then I kind of did like a deep dive into you know SEO, email, content, etc. You know, what resources did we have in place? What were the different numbers doing? Um, you know, and then kind of prioritizing what's going to take a while to get rolling, right? Like content takes quite a while to get you know to really get traction. 
Um, but, you know, SEO, you know, there could be some quick wins there. Email, there could be some quick wins. Um, and so kind of like putting together the, this is, uh, you know, where we could get and like if we're going to actually build this thing, build this marketing team and build this company into a real brand, where, you know, where do we start? And so that was a lot of learning about like how it worked at Zillow. And I, I chatted with, you know, the heads of email marketing and SEO and content marketing and, you know, and all of that at Zillow to really learn like what do they do, how did they start it, all of that, um, and then right. keeping on, and then and then kind of thinking about and talking with my boss about how does that look for a small brand like Hot Pads that we want to grow, you know, exponentially. Right. Um, right. And so yeah, th that's kind of how it was. And then uh, I knew that I had like heads to hire. I knew that I could hire people. Um, and so that's always a nice luxury to have. Boss. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I was told that like I could hire six people in my first year. I was like, all right, sweet. <laughs> um, and so it was like, all right, like who do we, you know who do we need? And so my first hires were email and content. Um, awesome. And then I brought on PR or the woman who's now in PR. She came on as a writer. And now she's heading up PR for us. Um, and then I brought on a full-time SEO manager. I had a, an in-house link builder, and I have a couple more helping out um, now as well. So um, you know, hired SEO last because that's my that's my you know specialty, but. Right. I was also at you know managing a team of you know I was managing six people directly and so only like 10 15 percent of my time was going to SEO and we're like we need SEO and so then we hired in Kara um, who's doing a phenomenal job. Awesome. Uh, so you know kind of as those like as those needs come up and as those pain points come up then like we were able to kind of you know be proactive about it. Gotcha, gotcha. And so yeah, I, I definitely think that playing to your strengths is in SEO, while you know hiring the other pieces that really you know can pick up the pace as well. Um, uh, in the in the background, is a very smart move. Um, did you know that like right away you wanted to do uh, a, a big investment into content um, and and email? I, I mean, I know that email is obviously a pretty big one, especially in the in your industry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what were the main things that you wanted? Uh, uh, what were the main problems that you wanted to solve as far as email and content goes, and, and why you hired those first? Yeah, I mean, the, it always goes back to whenever I'm, I'm thinking about you know marketing and kind of how we build a team and how we build a business, you know, in, in partnership with you know the, the founders of Hot Pads who are still here and the you know the directors of engineering and all of that and kind of all of us working together towards like you know where are we going as a company. Um, you know, looking at like kind of always looking for the white spots or the bright spots. I think is what Malcolm Gladwell calls them. Yeah. And basically saying like, okay, then you know, if we push on this lever, like where could we see good growth? Um, right. So the reason I decided we hired content and email first was because you know I'm not an email marketer, right? right. Uh, so I mean, like I you know I use Mailchimp to do campaigns and whatever, but like right. I'm not a you know a large scale email marketer. So we hired a woman who's who's incredible at you know she's doing e-commerce uh, email marketing before. Right? Awesome. And, and rentals is very similar to that. Yeah. Um, so you know, and figuring out new campaigns that we could do, and you know, kind of how we diversify it. What are the different like uh, need states? What are the different points, like pain points in the, excuse me, in the conversion path? Um, you know, and kind of how can we use email to help create a stickier product to get people coming back, submitting more inquiries, that sort of thing. Because email is an engagement play; it's not a top of funnel play, right? So I was right. working hard on SEO, and I got Desiree to work hard on email, and then brought on Joanna, and you know, working on content and building the blog, and you know, editorial email marketing, and and all of that sort of thing. Um, you know, and we hired content early on because like we knew, you know, Zillow has been built off of PR, um, you know, and, and data content and economic content. Zillow launched with the Zestimate, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So you know, and and Stan, who created the original Zestimate algorithm, you know, kind of heads up, um, you know, the team. Um, that uh, and and now his director of economic research, you know, heads up a lot of the the stuff that uh, you know Zillow is putting out, right? And so like our long term vision was like, okay, then see we're gonna get, um, you know, we're, we're gonna start doing that on hot pads as well, and then just you know, kind of what are the steps that we had to take to get there? Like we've, I've always had that vision for where we needed to go marketing wise for hot pads. Right. It's just a matter of like getting the right people and the right pieces in place to to realize that. Um, and it's felt like gotcha. in the last like. Six months, we really started to realize that. Gotcha. What are the kind of what are the main values in the people that you were looking for uh, whenever you were hiring? Like, what were the main values in these people that you were really looking for? Yep, um, it's a great question. Uh, first one is obviously you know aptitude for the for the role, aptitude for the channel, um, you know experience, um, you know for sure because these are like you know they weren't entry level positions, right? I needed people that had that had done this before and had a proven track record. 
um, you know, competitive. Uh, I don't want anyone that's just going to like sit and you know rest on their laurels. Like I want people right. that are hungry, right, and just want to go get it. Um, you know, and and you know feel that that sense of urgency that I feel. Right. Um, you know, and so we can you know so we can uh, you know all kind of move you know move at the same pace. Um, those are those are the things I really look for, and then I, I always say that I look for people that are curious, right? Um, mm-hmm. So you know, asking like, well, why why aren't we doing that? Like, so and so is doing that. Why aren't we doing that, right? And you know, sometimes the answer is, well, we're not doing that because of X, Y, and Z, right? right. And like, oh, okay, like that makes sense. But like that questioning and like, but well, we could do this and it could drive this. Like, okay, like I love having those questions. Yeah. You know, from and people. those kind of people also pick up the pace whenever uh, things are getting fall like falling through the cracks and stuff, and they're like, "Well, we're waiting on this," or like, "You know, why aren't we doing this first? And then people are like, "Oh, well, we didn't do this first. Oh, right. Totally. <laughs> or, or you know, or like, there's this need, and uh, you know, like we just did a uh, last night. Um, we were part of a, an off-campus student housing um, event at uh, at one of the universities here in San Francisco. Um, and it was the it was the guy that heads up outreach for hot pads that drove that right like he got the contact he put it together he got like a hot pads banner made and business cards and stickers and all of this stuff you know and, and just That's put awesome. it all together and made it you know and made it happen and he's our head of you know he's our head of outreach. Yeah. Um, you know, like that's not. I mean, you know, that's not directly part of his job, but like right. it also, you know, drove a ton of value for us. Right. Um, you know, so people that just want to like jump in and get their hands dirty and do what it takes, right? Like we're still a small company. Yeah. Um, you know, we're owned by Zillow, and like you know, we work for Zillow Group, but um, you know, we're still a small business unit, and so you know, we we work, you know, we work hard and we work fast. Right, having an outreach person who will organize an event just to get opportunities together—that's something that's like a dream quality to have in yeah, that person. Yeah, yeah. He, didn't, that I mean, he didn't. He didn't put together the event. He put together our like us taking part in the event that was already planned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. But yeah, like get, you know, getting our name out there and getting that recognition and using you know physical marketing materials to like spread our name and you know help us get more traction within the city. Like, yeah, it's it's phenomenal. Yeah, he's. Yeah. he's He's done an amazing job, right? He's a huge asset to the team. Awesome, awesome. So what kind of, I mean, I guess we have the values that we set up, uh, that you set up, or that you were looking for in these people that you hired. What kind of values did you really want to portray in, in kind of the, uh, I guess, uh, uh, kind of the systems that you put forth uh, uh, in, in email marketing and content marketing and that kind of stuff uh, for Hotpads as a brand specifically? Um, was there a certain uh, like kind of effort taken on nailing down the core values of Hotpads, the brand, and exactly like honing your approach to uh, doing that across all of your email content and your other content marketing and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff? Because obviously, I know the new site has a very different looking brand than originally whenever you started there. Yeah. Um, and and I'm just wondering how much that was like a core uh, piece throughout the whole timeline. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a very interesting question, um, especially with Hotpads being a company that was acquired right by a, by a bigger company. Um, Zillow is a very values driven you know company. It was started by Rich Barton, who founded Expedia, you know, and, and he's kind of, he's made a, a living, made a career out of uh, empowering consumers, right? So Expedia brought transparency to the opaque travel industry. Right. Um, Zillow brought uh, transparency to the opaque real estate industry. Or is bringing transparency to that Glassdoor, which is another company that he founded, is bringing transparency to like you know companies and what it's like to work at companies and jobs and salaries and you know all of that sort of thing. Um, and so we we've subsumed quite a bit, quite a bit of that. Um, you know, the old site specifically was pretty. It was busy. It was very data heavy. Um, you know, uh, which which completely like made sense for kind of where the company started and and all of that. Um, and with the reskin, what we really wanted to do was, uh, you know, simplify the brand, streamline it, um, you know, and 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 set us up really, really create a solid platform off of which to build for the future. Um, okay. Which I, which I think you know we we established. We did a lot of things like we made it responsive, right? So we moved away from like mobile dedicated URLs to being responsive, um, right. you know, which has been which has been awesome. Our mobile traffic has just taken off over the last couple of years. Um, awesome. you know, we're very similar to Zillow, which theirs is uh, like sixty percent of all traffic is mobile, with seventy percent on weekends. Um, ours is ours is right around that as well. Um, you know, so we're a very mobile, like mobile first, uh, mobile first company. Um, but when it comes to emails and that sort of thing, like 
um, you know, in the in the real estate in the rental space, people, especially in urban markets, need they they can't start looking more than four weeks out, and they have to find a place very quickly and set up everything for moving. And so we want to make that process as simple as possible. Mm. Uh, getting them the listings when they need it, you know, trying to identify what they what they need, uh, making good recommendations to them, you know, letting them know, for example, like when a, a listing goes off the market, right? So they don't keep like emailing the person about it, but they're like, okay, like I'm not gonna like hang on to getting this one place, but like that one's off the market, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to find some others. Right. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. Just like really helping them along in their journey towards, um, you know, towards finding a place to live, which is ultimately, you know, our goal, um, you know, and not just a place, you know, where they live, not, not just like, you know, an apartment that they love, but also in a city, you know, that they love, in a neighborhood that they love. Right. Uh, which is, you know, our, our kind of our big goal. Right. Was there any uh, uh, companies that you kind of looked for or to for inspiration throughout that like kind of process, like uh, Airbnb or somebody like that? That's not necessarily a direct competitor, but kind yeah. of in a similar uh, situation as to trying to find a you know good spot to go or uh, uh, travel and that kind of stuff. Yeah, totally. We take inspiration from a lot of different you know places. Uh, I forget who it was that said that um, you know that good artists create, great artists steal. Yeah. Um, you know, we, I, I've definitely taken inspiration from a lot of, you know, a lot of different companies. Like Airbnb has done some phenomenal work. Um, you know, a lot of different like travel sites have done phenomenal work. I take inspiration from e-commerce sites and yeah. you know, a lot of like the marketing that they do. Um, yeah, uh, you know, some brands have done a great job of humanizing, right? Humanizing the brand. Yeah. Um, you know, so like we we want to move, you know, in that direction. Like, you know, Moz with Roger Mozbot and you know that kind of thing. Like. Right. Uh, you know, we, we kind of want to move, you know, in that direction and, you know, have a very strong brand voice and, yeah, I mean, you know, every brand does things well and, and they don't do other things so well. So, like, we try to find the, you know, find those bright spots again and, you know, say, like, that's working for this company in this space and this, this one's working for this company in this space and, you know, how can we make that, like, we should think about how that works for our, you know, for our space while at the same time, you know, realizing that, like, we have this strategy and this roadmap that we're executing on. Um, you know, and, and, and also not, you know, distracting ourselves from that. Right. I actually think that that aligns a little bit more with uh, the Bruce Lee quote where he was like, uh, uh, absorb what is useful, discard what is not, and add what is uniquely your own. That's a quote that I've always loved and carried that with me, but uh, especially whenever I'm looking for uh, to others for inspiration, stuff like that, definitely taking that along with me. Yeah. Um, I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, what are some of the... I would say, I guess, you know, and obviously this is more of an overarching question that are just, you know, kind of uh, 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 not as deep-seated in hot pads and, and kind of what you're doing there, but what are some of the most, uh, 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 or, uh, or the bigger ticket items as far as marketing that you really love to check off? I mean, obviously you have content and, and, and SEO and, and email marketing and stuff like that, but is there anything from like a UX perspective, a CRO perspective that you focused on a lot uh, on the uh, whenever you were updating the new site and everything. I know that it seems like a lot of effort was taken into that just from my perspective, from a usability perspective. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that, that kind of thing is interesting because like a lot of that doesn't live under marketing at Hotpads. Um, you know, those cool. are we view those as being uh, product decisions. Um, right. You know, mostly. Uh, I was definitely in a lot of the meetings about like you know different designs and different things to try and um, you know so that we didn't tank our conversion rate and all that sort of thing, right? So we we really did like four months of building and then four months of testing, um, you know, on the site and testing different configurations on our you know our listing pages and and all of that uh, sort of thing, and then also taking into account you know SEO and email and tightening up the funnels and you know and all of that. So. Um, yeah, I mean, the, but the stuff that I'm really passionate about is like, um, you know, really what you could call growth marketing, right? So there, you know, there's SEO, which is top of funnel. There's email, you know, and then analytics, like what, you know, what's driving traffic well, um, you know, but could drive more if we like focus more on it and kind of push on that lever, or you know, what's driving inquiries, what's driving revenue directly, um, you know, and then uh, I, I enjoy thinking about those big like strategic questions of like this is where the business needs to go, right? This is the revenue number we need to hit, or this is the traffic number we need to hit. And then, okay, how do we get that done, right? Like, right. You know, and, and working with the different channel owners to say, like, all right, what's going to show us, you know, what's going to get us to this KPI that we need to hit? Um, that kind of thing is really fun for me as a, 
you know, I, I, I started off in SEO, but I've never really been a specialist. Like, I'm very much a generalist and a strategist. Um, and that, that's what I enjoy, you know, working on and what I think I'm pretty good at. Um, you know, and so, so kind of digging into those, like, overall business metrics and then, you know, working towards what's needed. You know, I'm not, I'm not married to, like, SEO is the, you know, the solution for all your problems. Or, right, right. Like, email marketing is the solution for all your problems. Or, oh, man, we need social media. But, like, all of those are like our channels, and uh, you know, and, and that that work towards you know building a business. And different right. businesses need different channels at different times. Right. Uh, you know, and like SEO might be in a really good place, but we need more work on email. Or email might be in a really good place, but we need more work on social. Or you know, social might be in a good place, but we need more work on content. Or you know, whatever it is. Um, yeah. And so solving those business problems is uh, is really really fun. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, awesome. I mean. You know, I, I hate to say it, but I've kind of run out of questions. <laughs> uh, from, uh, let's see. Um, I mean, I would say, you know, what kind of uh, 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 things inspire you, what kind of people inspire you, but, I mean, you have, like, Malcolm Gladwell you mentioned. Uh, yeah. Are there more along that kind of ilk that people, people should follow uh, that you gain inspiration from and what you do? Um, man, that's a great, that's a great question. Uh, you know, there are definitely people that I, like, take inspiration from, um, you know, and, and in different ways as well, right? Like, I, you know, I wear my marketing hat and I'm inspired by, you know, great marketers like the Brian Clarks and, you know, the Buffer team does a great job and, um, you know, Rand's a super inspirational guy and, um, you know, uh, Darmesh, even though he's the, the CTO of HubSpot, like, he's a phenomenal marketer as well. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of my old distilled co-workers, um, you know, are, are people that I very much look up to and still, you know, count as peers and, and friends. You know, Michael King, Tom Critchlow, people like that. Um, you know, what, what's really interested me in the last year or so is, is entrepreneurship and, and building a company. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, the people, I mean, you know, Richard Branson, the founder of Virgin, is like, you know, right. If I could meet one person in 2015, it would be Richard Branson, like hands yeah. down. Um, you know, a, another person that I respect the hell out of is Tim Ferriss. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's done a lot of awesome stuff, and you know, continues to you know to give back. And um, yeah, so like you know, he's one. Uh, Joel and Leo at Buffer, like I you know I love the stuff that they read and how transparent and open um, you know they are. Yeah. Um, you you should know, try to do the Dan Martell, who founded uh, you know Clarity.fm, like. You know, he's, oh, like, yeah. he's a hard-driving hard dude. Like, he's, uh, you know, super, super smart. Um, you know, he, he writes something, I read it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, people, you know, people like that, that that really, you know, inspire me. And then, um, you know, other people that I, I see building companies that are just, like, out there doing it and hustling hard, right? Like, uh, Danielle Morell from Mattermark is doing, you know, amazing, you know, amazing work over there. Yeah. Uh, you know, p people like that that are just, like, you know, working hard, super excited what they're about what they're doing, you know, really inspire me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so what are, uh, I would also say, what are some of the, uh, I mean, we talked earlier about the employees and, and, and really the values that you, you were looking for whenever you were hiring them. Uh, what kind of things do you try to inject into the mix as a manager uh, to kind of facilitate, uh, like, a higher growth or like higher competition or, or uh, you know, whatever those things may be that you're really trying to get your team to focus on? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. I mean, the biggest challenge with, uh, you know, having a, a bigger size team is getting everyone to communicate, right? And so trying to, like, my job is uh, communicating all the time. Um, and breaking down silos. Um, that's that's a lot of what I do. Like making sure you know everyone that needs to be involved is involved, and you know getting people in your room to talk about stuff when you know conversations need to happen, and um, you know involving people from the start um, as opposed to bringing people in halfway through. You know as often as possible. Yeah. Um, you know I try to show them like what our what our competition is doing. Um, you know and and inspire people that way, right? And still a, a sense of competition in there. You know, yeah. like, uh, kind of stoke that competition that, like, all of them have, you know, already already in their being. But, like, stoke it and be like, hey, these guys are doing this. Um, you know, and, and but then also communicating, like, you know, this this competitor is doing this, but we're not doing it because of X, Y, and Z, and we think that we're going to win because of, you know, A, B, and C. Right. Uh, you know, and communicating that sort of thing. So, like, you know, communicating the strategy, like, frequently and reiterating it um, and keeping everyone, you know, focused on that, on that strategy. Gotcha. Um, that we think is going to win. 
Uh, so and, and that's been a huge learning lesson for me, like as a you know as a manager, you know, and learning like you know when do I advocate stuff and when do I question as well, right? Like I'm constantly going to my boss with questions and you know asking for things, and sometimes and she does the same thing to me. She's like, well, like you know this makes sense, so yeah, like let's change our you know let's change our like how we're looking at that. But like this other one, like this is the big picture about why we're not doing that. I'm like, oh okay, like I you know I get it. Yeah. So, yeah. Those lessons uh, as being a manager are really, really interesting. The things that you actually learn whenever you're, you know, whenever you're actually just, whenever you're actually just a point person or like, you know, you're in charge, you're a consultant or something like that. But then whenever you have to actually, you know, wrangle a team together to do all these things, it's interesting the kind of, uh, like, internal conflicts you run into and, like, you know, motivating teams yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. And those, you know, and, and, and those happen, um, you know, and, and, I, I was talking with someone uh, up in Seattle the other day, and uh, or a, a coworker of mine. I was on the phone with her, and I told her I was like, uh, you know, SEO is easy. Like SEO is, you know, comparatively is is easy. Uh, you know, people are difficult. You yeah. know, uh, like managing. You know, because everyone has their like, you know, experiences and hopes and dreams and what they're good at, and what they're not good at, and um, and all of that. And that's like that's the challenge of being a manager. Um, right. But like that's also super rewarding. Um, you know, it's really fun to see people grow and start like working together, and you know, and, and you know, you focus. I, I forget who I, I read this, uh, where I read this, but uh, someone was talking about a challenge, like challenge that they were having internally, and they're like, I just can't solve this problem, and then they just decided to start focusing on the people. They're like, I focused on the people, and all the like the you know the, the team problems and the problems we were having, getting like things off the ground just went away because everyone mm. wanted to work together. <laughs> mm. I was like, ah, interesting. Okay. That, that is you know, cool. That totally makes sense. You can't just like focus on you know the, you know the the rankings, right, or or whatever the traffic or the social right. shares. Like, focus on the people that are driving that, and you know you're going to be successful. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, yeah, there was a there was a really cool thing, kind of to that point uh, uh, that uh, I was at I was at a talk recently with Brian Halligan from. Uh, HubSpot, yeah. uh, and he was talking about how one of the things that they actually uh, put uh, in play um, at the ground level of the company uh, is that if uh, they have a leaderboard uh, yeah. in in their own thing, where uh, uh, whenever uh, blog posts come out or whatever, mm -hmm. everybody can see it. It's pretty easy to do with analytics, but yeah. um, and so the person who's at the top of the leaderboard every month gets an incentive something That's random cool. like yeah. uh, they get to hang out with the CEO or they get yeah. like a paid day off or yeah. uh, and That's stuff cool. like that. Yeah. So I think That's that fun. being able to institute those kind of comp uh, competitive uh, practices and stuff like that at like a, mm -hmm. at a company level that anybody could do uh, yeah. gets everybody chasing traffic and I think yeah. that <laughs> which is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it, it's also a balancing act because you don't want to like you know, in, it, like implement stuff like that to you know to to get people you know to to kind of stoke that competitiveness uh, at the expense of like people getting along and people working along together, right? Right. Uh, so that's a, that's the challenge there. But like I think that's really that's cool that they that they do that. And other people, you know, other companies will you know incentivize you know different uh, you know KPIs or like you know the team hits this goal this month and you get you know the whole team gets you know a uh, you know a trip, a skydiving trip or something, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, like, you have uh, the developers who have, like, you know, if you catch a bug or whatever, you get a certain um, incentive and stuff like that. I saw somebody recently, there was, like, one of those bug tracking uh, mm -hmm. competitions or something for, like, Facebook, yeah. and yeah. they had all their hackers come in, and, like, some guy found, like, 10 of them in a row and got $200,000 or something. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, so. crazy. Cool. Hey man, I probably need to be uh, yeah. I need to be heading. I think I have a meeting here at two o'clock. Okay. Yeah. My bad. Uh, yeah, we can definitely hop off. But cool. Thank, thank you for you. this, man. This was fun. Yeah, it was definitely great talking to you. I hope that this doesn't get deleted whenever I hit stop broadcast. So. Yeah. It should. It should save. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, thank you, man. Have a good one. All right, man. You as well. I'll talk to you later. See you, man. Bye bye.